The following airbrush product was received free of charge for the purpose of review. However, I've not been paid to make this review and all opinions remain my own. Thanks to Sino Airbrush for sending this out to take a look at. An airbrush is one of those tools that many modelers seek to add to their repertoire. And sometimes getting a big bulky compressor isn't quite the right decision. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at this portable airbrush system. So join me as I find out how this one works and if it's any good. I'm Matt, this is Model Minute, and welcome to my review of the Ribo Sino portable airbrush and compressor. So let's take a look at the contents of this airbrush kit. Contained within this rather sturdy and attractive cardboard box, you can see I've got a selection of different parts. First up, let's take a quick look at the instruction booklet. And you can see here that it states that it's a TM90 series airbrush. There are quite a few little bits of information in there that are worth reading, but generally, if you've got any experience of airbrushes, setting this up and getting started is as easy as plug and play. Back to the box now, you can see that everything is laid out really neatly in a little plastic tray. So let's start getting some of these parts out. Here we've got a little wrench which will help get the nozzle off the end of the airbrush and some reamers which will be helpful when cleaning. A little pipette to suck up some fluid and paint if, if we need it. And then we've got two battery packs. They're both exactly the same and they are USB-C ported on the bottom. Speaking of the USB ports, you've got a USB charging cable with a normal standard USB port on one side and a USB-C plug on the other. And to be honest, they just snap into place. It's quite a good fit. The compressor itself then comes in this rather stylish blue, but I am informed that there are other colors available and it feels to be of a metal construction. There is information taped to the front and the back, which if you want to pause the video and take a look at, feel free. However, the compressor feels to be of quite a good quality. We get a four foot braided air hose also included in the set. So if you don't want to attach it directly to the top of the compressor, you don't have to. Two little hoppers for the paint are included, one bigger than the other, and they both come with plastic tops. And then finally, the airbrush itself. This is of a metal construction and has a little plastic protective cap on the end. This is a dual action airbrush, so pressing the trigger will allow air to enter the airbrush and then pulling it back will control the flow. It also has a movement limiter on the back for controlling the flow of the airbrush. And now let's get it set up. So plugging in the battery is a simple press fit into the bottom. Then after that, you can screw on the airbrush to the top of the compressor. And you'll notice that when it's on, the battery indicator will light up. So how loud is this thing? Well, I think you agree, it's not actually that loud. It's quieter than other systems that I've had in the past. Now I can attach the hopper to the top. It simply screws into place. And the second battery was put on to charge so that I had a spare for when the first one ran out. I'm not going to use it attached to the compressor though because I found it to be a little bit unwieldy. So instead, I'm going to use the air hose to give myself better control. And that being said, now I need a kit to build. I've chosen this Airfix FW190 in 172nd scale because it has a fairly simple paint scheme, but it does lend a few challenges to the airbrush, such as that camouflage and a bit of mottling. So to do this, I'm going to use some Vallejo Model Air colors from their Luftwaffe set, purely because they come with the right colors pre mixed up. So to start off with, I'm going to do the internal area of the cockpit and I'm going to use this gray to do this. I found that the hopper needed quite a lot of paint in it because it's got quite a long sort of tube that goes from the hopper to the actual nozzle. And if that's not full of paint, you're not going to get anything going through the airbrush. So I had to use quite a lot of paint in the hopper. Anyways, the first layer to go down was on this internal cockpit area. I've already assembled the kit. I'm just going to show you the painting element purely because this is a test of an airbrush. 
and to be honest the spray was quite fine and I didn't notice much in the way of splatter. As you can see here spraying on the inside of the cockpit the control was quite good and a few thin coats would build up a nice even coverage of this paint. So having finished building the rest of the model and given it a spray can primer base ready for the next layers of paint, the paint I chose to use was this light blue for the underside and this was simply just airbrushed over to the entire model. You can see here that the control is quite good and the atomization is all right as well. I did find this particular paint it tended to clog a little bit so a little bit of bubble cleaning was done to make sure it stayed nice and clear. After this the dark grey for the main camouflage colour was applied and just swinging back to the cleaning element of this airbrush I did find that I had to bubble clean this after every single uh, time I changed colours. But this particular paint though was used for a bit of mottling and you can see that actually this airbrush has pretty impressive control when doing this sort of work. I did have to take it off to the side however just to uh, push some air through to make sure that I didn't get any splatter come out onto the model. And then when that paint was dry, the final green part of the camouflage could be applied. I did this completely freehand just to see what the control was like. And the edges are actually quite neat and tidy. I found that the controllability of this system was really good. It was at this point in the build that I realised I was running out of battery. Uh, so I simply swapped it out. My first indication that I was running out of battery was that the pressure started to drop. It didn't drop a lot but it did drop a little bit and that was when I decided to swap out the battery. So here I am coating the aircraft in a varnish ready for transfers and then when the transfers have been applied a matte varnish was sealed over the top to protect them. And we're nearly at the end of this build actually and the final thing I decided to do was mix a bit of the matte varnish and some black paint together to create a sort of thinned down version of the paint and I carefully applied this to the engines and gun ports to simulate smoke. Uh, anyways, I will let you take a look at the finished model now so you can judge for yourself what you think of this airbrush product and if it's done a good job. So, what do you think of this airbrush product? Personally, I have been very impressed. I quite liked all of the little bits and pieces that you got inside the kit to get you started, but the fact that it comes with two battery packs, which are really easy to swap in and out, really easy to charge, and actually last quite a long time, means that you can get quite a lot of work done on only one battery pack. I did notice whilst I was using the product that the casing got a little bit warm but it didn't overheat or anything and that's understandable because obviously it's doing some work for you and it's going to generate heat doing that. The airbrush was easy enough to use but I did as mentioned earlier prefer using it with the attached 4 foot hose rather than having it attached directly to the compressor. I'll put a slide on the screen now about some product information and some stats about the airbrush that I've got here. And for those of you who'd like a variable compressor so you can control the airflow, sadly this doesn't have that function. If however you want to use less pressure, then a slightly flatter battery will give you that. I found the cleaning of the airbrush to be fairly easy as well, no more difficult than other systems that I've used. The only thing I wasn't a massive fan of was those plastic hoppers, being quite large for my use, seeing as I only really use small amounts of paint to finish this model, and the fact that it has a long tube or nozzle that goes down actually into the airbrush itself, which meant that had to be full of paint or you weren't going to get anything through. I believe there are slightly different versions out there that come with the more traditional metal hoppers, which are smaller, and this looks like it could be swapped out to 
uh, fix one of those because it has that screw fitting so it looks a bit more modular. Mine just didn't come with that. But anyways, I think it's time to wrap this one up here. This is a airbrush system, which I'm actually pretty impressed with. Given the quality of the parts and how it's operated, this is something that I would definitely use in future projects. Retailing for under hundred pounds, that seems like a pretty fair price as well, given the quality of the product and the amount of stuff you get inside the box. Naturally, for more up-to-date information on pricing, check out the links underneath the video. For me though, I feel like this is a product which would be perfect for me when I'm modeling away from the workbench and even just for some simple airbrushing when it doesn't really justify getting out the entire uh, big compressor system that I have. But what are your thoughts on this product? Let me know in the comments below. As always, a quick shout out to my patrons and channel members for the extra support they give my channel. Massive thanks to these guys on screen. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Paul, my latest patron. Welcome to the club. To find out more about how you can get involved, take a look at the links in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, dropping a like, and if you're new here, subbing to the channel will help ensure that you never miss a modeling upload. Finally, the last thing to say to you is a massive thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.